We're taking a look at layers now, and I know that in Illustrator, layers uh, behave differently than in Photoshop. So if you're transitioning from Photoshop to Illustrator, this, this is a really good lesson to pay attention to so that we can understand layers and use them to our advantage. Layers are a very good way to organize your work. Now if you come over here to the right side of the tools panel you'll see the the layers panel here now right now we just have one layer you can create new layers which we'll do in just a second but take a look at the other options you have right here right here we can double click on the name and you can change the name of the layer which we'll do here in a second you can double click in the square which brings you to the option to change the color I'm gonna change this to black you'll see why here in just a second and then you can also uh, do what's called locking the layer which we'll talk about and hiding the layer so when you click on this eyeball it it switches between visib visible and hidden so to understand layers what I've done is I've set up a little um, makeshift uh, studio here with cellophane paper that's used for overhead projectors and if we take a look at this first sheet you you can see that I have this uh, sheet right here uh, I've, I've labeled it layer one and put it in black now going back to the interface here if I create a new layer what I've just done so I've got a red layer if I if I uh, go back to the cellophane, sorry, there's a lot of back and forth switching here. But if I go back to the cellophane, what I've what I've essentially done is placed one new layer on top of the original layer one. So if I were to draw on layer one, I'll just write the word draw and a box you'll notice that that layer is independent of anything that is on the original layer. Going back to the interface here in Illustrator, you'll notice that I have layer two selected up here. So anything that I draw on layer two, so I'll draw a box here and I'll fill it in with uh, red. You'll notice that this box now appears in this white box over here in the layers panel and it's on top of the layers layer one panel so if I if I uh, click the eyeball I just made the uh, layer disappear and, and all of its content disappear so it's essentially going back to the cellophane paper um, it's essentially if I just took away that um, second layer and now you're just seeing it a, seeing a blank layer one so I know that I have that box there I can go on to my layer one by selecting layer one and grabbing let's grab a circle and we will give it a black fill so I can put a circle here and we're gonna go ahead and now turn on layer two again and so you'll notice that Turning that on, basically going back to the cellophane paper, makes that layer two visible. Now the stacking order is important. You'll notice that the uh, red layer is on top of the black layer. So I can move this all over and it's not going to be on top of the red layer at all. Unless I go over here to the right panel and drag, click and hold and drag layer two underneath layer one. Now doing that essentially moves layer, if we go back to this cellophane paper, and I'll draw a circle here, it essentially moves that layer one on top of layer two. So I can move this layer one around and you'll notice that layer two is, is stagnant, it's just still. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move layer two, going back to Illustrator, I'm going to move layer two underneath, or excuse me, layer one underneath layer two. So we'll come back here and put layer one on the bottom and layer two on the top. And you'll notice that the red now overlays the black. Um, 
Now what we're going to do is I'm going to add one more layer. We're going to call this the layer 3. You'll notice that I was on layer 1 when I did that. Let me control Z. I'm on, I'm on layer 1 and I click new layer and essentially that puts a layer in between layer 1 and 2. I'm going to undo. So if you want a layer on top you have to put you have to have the topmost layer selected and then click the new layer button. And so I've got a green layer 3 right here in the cellophane paper. And now the layer 3 is the topmost layer. So I'm going to go ahead and, and grab the polygon tool, change the fill to oh, just one second, let me deselect the black circle, grab the polygon tool and select green for my fill. You'll notice that the Oh, excuse me. You'll notice the mistake I just made is I was on layer one, and you'll notice that's why this green is on. Um, it's underneath the red, but we want it on top of the red. So what we can do is we can click this disclosure triangle, and that shows each of the paths that we have on layer one. What I can do is I can take this path and drag and drop it onto layer three. And bada bing bada boom. So now we have a circle on layer one, a red square on layer two, and a green uh, hexagon on layer three. And so it's essentially looking like this now, if I can draw. Um, that was a terrible, terrible hexagon. Don't tell anybody I did that. So we'll do it like this. So that's my hexagon. Now I can move that around and you'll notice it's not just doing anything to layer one or two. So if you can grasp this concept of layers, it will be the most useful tool in organizing your work. For example, let's say I have, if I go back to layer two, I want to specifically be on layer two, and I do another um, square, and we'll change the color here to red what I can do is I can group these red objects by hitting command G on the Mac or control G on the PC and now I essentially have one group you'll notice that when I click the disclosure triangle this group is now a sub layer under layer 2 and if I click that I can directly select one of I can make sure that I have th those objects in that group selected here. I can also double click the objects and then independently select those. And then I can go ahead and ungroup those by choosing Shift Command G or Shift Control G on a PC. So one thing that we'll definitely be doing in the tutorials as we're going through our uh, projects is we'll be naming the layers. So for example, the bottom layer, because it's always going to be on the bottom, I pretty much always name background. So I'll give this the name of background. And the reason why, let me delete this that circle, I can create a background layer here and you'll notice it goes underneath all of those objects because it's on the bottom most layer. You can give that background whatever whatever color you want and then you can have your second layer be picture because you want to add a picture and then you can have your third layer be title and so forth now the reason why layers will definitely become handy is when you start adding a lot of a lot of objects to the canvas things can kinda of get in the way and you'll rearrange certain things and you'll need to get some of the clutter out of the way so you know where you would want to put elements exactly on the canvas. So what I would suggest doing is spend some time playing with layers. Be aware, this is one important thing, is you don't always have to have the layer selected to select the object corresponding to that layer. You'll notice that because I have the blue square selected, it shows that this layer is highlighted. However, I can just go ahead and grab the green hexagon and you'll notice that it automatically selects 
that title layer. That's something that I know is a little different than Photoshop. You typically have to select those layers to select the objects in those layers. In, in Illustrator you don't have to. One other thing that you'll want to be aware of is the background. If you have the background a solid color or a solid shape, you can lock that background image. Now there's no way I can grab that background. What's extremely useful here, if I want to move quite a few objects at once, I can click and drag and select those all, all the objects I want to select without selecting that background layer. So that's pretty useful when you're working with a bunch of content on the page. You can lock certain layers and select layers that you want to work with at that time. One thing that I would suggest doing is uh, work with th three layers at a time. Go ahead and jump into Illustrator, create a background layer, create a, you can, we can call this a box layer, and we can call this a circle layer. When you have these selected, check out, just play around with these, but go ahead and grab this, cert this top layer and put it in between the middle and the bottom and you'll notice that the green triangle remains on top of the blue background uh, but underneath the red box. If I were to drag the circle down one more you'll see that the hexagon appears to disappear but it really hasn't it's just gone underneath that background. So we're gonna go ahead and just move that back up and I would encourage you to play with layers. These layers will definitely be your best friend as far as organizing your work as we work through these projects.